Hello everyone. In the previous videos, we have learned about what an artificial neural network is, what are its main components, what are the various elements which are in an artificial neural network which govern them, and finally, what an activation function is and what are its types. If you have not yet gone through that to have the basic information, you can find the links of the videos in the description box. So, let's begin to develop a neural network model in MATLAB. Generally, there are three different methods in which you can develop a simple neural network model and analyze it. There are two methods which are of inherently built components in MATLAB which two as a component of tools which they come with. And the third one is a code. In this video, I'll be talking about a simple tool which we can use to understand how a neural network model can be developed. So, let's begin. The name of the tool is NC tool. So, as you can see, NC tool is generally referred and used for clustering mechanism. But, if you look in the left corner, you can find a neural network start button. So, when we go through it, we can find the thing which we need to develop a neural network model. So, in this video, we'll be developing about an input-output model that refers to giving an input and output and trying to train the model to give the output as we desire. So, when we go through this fitting app, we can see that we come up with a neural network fitting application. So, if you see this network which is here and you can understand that based upon the previous discussions in the videos, the basic component of neural network looks like this with an input and a hidden layer with connection to the output layer in giving our desired output. So, let's begin with the model. So, for any model, the main components which are required are inputs and targets, target being the output values which we need. So, I have previously already put an input and output file in my model, sorry, in my MATLAB, which I'll be sharing you what they are. So, the input data which I have used is of rainfall data set which I have taken from a satellite data which has zeros and some values based upon the occurrence of rainfall on the present year. Similarly, the target data I have taken the observed rainfall data set with data having zeros and values in a similar fashion. So, the main aim here is to try to convert the satellite data set to the observed data set. You can use it for various applications, but for the example point of view, I'm just giving it to you to understand how inputs and targets work. So, when we get back to the model, we can see the inputs and outputs. As they are already in the workspace, they'll be appearing here and you can directly give them as inputs and uh, targets. Or, you can also input them using this bar from which you can scroll down to the place where they are in and give them. So, as you can see already it was recognized that it's 470 by 10, 4720 by 1. So, the main thing in neural network development in MATLAB is it takes row matrices instead of column matrices. Hence, if you want a data set to be clearly understood by the MATLAB to develop a model, you need to give your data set in a row form. So, here when it's asking about what they are, I'll give it as matrix rows. So, I want to take a, each row as a data set and train it. There might be still a small confusion regarding for many people, which I'll be clearing out in the further videos when we deal with the code where I give you clear explanation about how these things work. So, for now, let's take this as matrix rows. When we go to the next one, we can see that 
it is dividing the data into three components and what are the three components so it is dividing the data as 70% of the data for training where the model is training itself to understand the pattern and trends in its in the given data set to be able to produce a good output so that refers to the 70% of the data where validation refers to right after the training we are trying to give the data only the input variables the input uh, to it and ask it to give us an output based upon its training patterns whereas testing refers to giving of our values which are not seen by the data sorry not seen by the model while development of the model hence we divide the data into three different components and thereby try to understand how our model has trained the data set and produced the results of validation and testing so when we go to the next step we can see that it is asking about number of hidden neurons so again if you see here in the below figure the hidden neurons are in the hidden layer they are the number of connections which the input data set is developing towards the hidden layer and to the output layer so when we use a 10 neurons creates 10 connections thereby trying to understand it in a further way to develop a good model quantifying the number of neurons is an important task as it affects the output of the model you can apply two methods either a trial and error trying to use it for each neuron and see how the model is working which takes a lot of time or try a method namely based upon the number of inputs which you are giving so the method is you can use 2n plus 1 where n is the number of variables we are using let's assume if you have two variables you'll be using phi number of neurons to begin with and try to get the best results you can keep on changing this value until you see that the model is performing well and there is not much change in the performance of model so that determines your best neuron and based on that you can derive multiple models to give a better output so in this case we will give 10 neurons for the purpose of the example so the next method another main component which is necessary for developing a good network is training algorithm it refers to how the model is training itself which uh, procedure is it following to train to get a better output there are three models mentioned here they are levenberg markward bayesian re bayesian regularization and scale conjugate gradient so based on this based on previous works which i have gone through most of the works have used levenberg markward which is found to be a good algorithm which provides results fast quick and accurate although there are many other works which have used in other uh, uh, algorithms like bayesian or scale conjugate it depends on the type of work and the kind of data which you are using which you can understand by further reading whereas which i'll be providing with, to you people in the further videos but to understand the basic concept here we'll be using Levenberg mark word to train the model so as we go and train the model you can see there was a pop-up which shows how the model is trained etc and you can see here we got values for mean square error and r this mean square error is calculated based upon the input data we have given which is uh, the precipitation of satellite and the targets we have given the model has trained itself and produced a training more training value that training value is compared with the target value which we have given the 70 percent data set and it checks how it is performing as you can see from this we can understand the value of r is 0 0.282 and the validation is 0 0.5 and the testing is 0 0.3 generally there can be a thumb rule we could, which we can use is if you get any value higher than 
0.8 or 0.85 you can consider it as a good model if you get your testing and validation sets in the similar ranges or better so in this case if you see the correlation is very less comparatively 0.282 refers to very low correlation between the result we wanted and the result which he has given so either you can retrain the model trying to see if the model changes because the neural network output changes every time you train the model because it tries to understand a different relationship and give a better result so the number of times you retrain the model accuracy might change you can alternatively change the number of neurons or the algorithm which you are using and try it better so and if you want to use a different understanding or you have different data sets which you want to understand you can also give them here and try to understand how they are changing etc so this is a basic model which anyone can use to develop a model also there is an advantage using this tool is you can also develop various functions or generate the code based upon what we have done like this this is an example of what is the network which we have developed and what are the various simulation diagrams and other matrix function which we have developed can be seen through this tool although based on the amount of data you are using the observation of the figure might take time as you can see here the simulink diagram is taking a lot of time yes so as you can see uh, the this is the pop up which has come and has disappeared quickly here you can see the number of of course the number of iterations the number of times the model has run before it has reached its performance which it thought was a good thing changing these parameters is not possible in this tool but in the further tools which i'll explain you can change them and try to develop a better model so this is a simple example about how you can develop a neural network model using nc tool so in the next video we will see another inbuilt function which can be used for developing another neural network model if you enjoyed watching this video please like it and subscribe and share it with people whom you think this could be helpful and show it component